it's Isabel and in today's video I'm going to be discussing I mean I made a video about manifesting specific people manifesting love in the past and as some of you may remember I was warning you guys not to try to manifest a specific person and instead focus on manifesting the right person for you so not a specific person but getting really specific and clear on the qualities you wanted this person to have and things like that but ever since I discovered Neville Goddard about a year ago I've been really playing around with different notions that I had and even breaking down my old beliefs on manifesting love, on manifesting specific people. And I really challenged myself to get out of my comfort zone and try something new. So if you guys want more information on Neville Goddard on his manifestation methods, I will link my favorite videos down below. I am here to say it is possible to manifest a specific person. I have seen other people do it. Some of my clients, I have helped them do this. And if any of you have any limiting beliefs or things like that, I would suggest that you watch my video on limiting beliefs so that we can focus on rebuilding a foundation so that it's easier to manifest because if you have a lot of limiting beliefs especially in love it will be kind of difficult to manifest a specific person because your inner dialogue has to coincide with what it is that you're trying to manifest so i will link that video down below for those of you who would like to watch it let's just get into it how to manifest a specific person using the Neville Goddard method. Neville Goddard talks a lot about the imagination, that our reality is created through the imagination. If you look around you or anything around in our physical world, all creations, inventions, technology, all of the stuff you see around you was either created by you through your imagination or by somebody else's imagination. Everything around us is a result of somebody's imagination. Even Einstein Einstein's theory of relativity was formed in his imagination. He had a dream, which our dreams are our imaginations coming to life. Our subconscious is what creates a lot of our dreams in our sleep. Neville Goddard teaches us to utilize the power of imagination to manifest our reality and our desires because if we can see it in our head as we all know through the law of attraction we can hold it in our hand our subconscious it is what is connected to what I call God what you can call as the universe source all of this is connected we're all interconnected so whatever you can visualize and imagine in your mind is what will come and all we have to do to manifest is to bring the imagination to the physical realm and we do this through visualization and visualization is most powerful in a sleepy almost dreamlike state at night before you go to sleep and in our dreams our subconscious is wide open usually when we're awake our conscious mind is what is in control it's driving the car I've talked about this before and so in order to successfully manifest anything you want anything is possible in this universe anything is possible in this infinite reality that we're in as long as we can bring that up at night while we're sleeping or before we fall asleep when we're in that sleepy dreamlike state then we will bring whatever it is that we want into the physical realm, into this reality that we're experiencing right now. So the first thing we're gonna have to do is to create a scene with the end result of what it is that you want. Now, this scene can be anything you want it to be. What Neville Goddard talks about is living in the end of what it is that you want. So what's important is that we decide what we want. If you want a relationship with this person, look at the very end result of what that relationship can end up to. So for many of us, that would be marriage. Even if you don't want marriage right off the bat, it's important that we see through to the very end because what happens is the universe, and I'll get into this a little bit later, but the universe constructs and builds everything in between. We don't have to worry about that. So all we have to worry about is the very end result and even past the end result of what we want. So when creating this scene, we have to create something that shows that you're already married to this person, that you're already living a life with this person. Because if we try to visualize a scene in the middle, the universe will only bring us thus far and it will cut off. We won't allow the universe to step in and create the work. So it doesn't matter if you just want to date or just want to meet this person or just boyfriend and girlfriend or whatever kind of relationship you want. Always visualize past the end result. And you have to make sure that the scene that you construct is in the first person. Many times when we visualize, we don't manifest because we're doing it as if we're watching a movie. So we see ourselves with that person like a movie unfolding. And what happens is if we don't manifest in the first person, so inside of our body looking out at the scene, then it's almost like you're watching somebody else do it and it won't manifest as it happening to you. So we 
we have to make sure that as we create this scene, you are seeing it through your body so you can look at your hands, look at your hair. For us women with long hair, people with long hair, we will see our hair in the way, we'll see you know different things. So you're just looking through your eyes, through your first person point of view. What's key is that this scene is as specific as possible. And it's only a moment in time, in the end result of what it is that you want that only lasts for a few seconds. So I would recommend that the scene you create be no more than 10 seconds because if we create a scene that is very long and long-winded, we can get lost in the visualization. If you guys, especially for those of you who struggle with focusing during visualization, if we create too long and too complex of a story, we're gonna get lost, limiting beliefs are gonna come up, we're gonna lose focus, so it's important we create something quick and to the point that shows everything that you wish to manifest in its very end result right in this 10 second visualization. The quickest, easiest scene that you can create is something that will come naturally to you, something that you can see happening. Even if you've never been in a romantic relationship before, even if you've never felt these feelings before, conjure up the feelings that it would feel. Just take a moment to imagine how it would feel to be married to somebody that you absolutely love, somebody amazing. You'd be very excited, you'd be very happy. If you have limiting beliefs around this, then you need to focus on rewriting your limiting beliefs before you get into manifesting because then those things can hold you back and you'll always have this voice in the back of your head saying, oh, that's never gonna happen, that's not true, whatever. So focus on your limiting beliefs so that these feelings will come naturally to you. Or even just think about a moment in your life where you felt really happy and really fulfilled and like everything was perfect. We're gonna get into scripting. The reason I have you script the scene before you get into visualization is because I want you to get as clear as possible and specific. So this could be a scene of two or three sentences. Remember, we don't want it to be more than 10 seconds long. Imagine yourself maybe at a five year marriage anniversary with this person and you're celebrating this marriage anniversary if you like to travel, it could be in another city or it could literally be in the kitchen in the morning as you're making breakfast and they come out and say something along these lines, but what you want to create in this scene is a cue that shows that you're married already, that you're already living in the end. So one thing that I find very helpful is just visualizing yourself with the rings on your hands. So as a woman, we would probably have an engagement ring and also a wedding ring, and this could be anything you want. And we have to see that cue in our visualization. So your scene can literally be this. You're in the kitchen, you're making breakfast, and all of a sudden your partner comes in and grabs your hand and says, I am so lucky to be married to you. I'm so blessed to be married to you. And you look at each other's eyes and you smile and you feel those feelings and then you release. So it could literally be this, you write this out. I'm in the kitchen making tofu scramble or egg scramble, I don't know what you guys eat. <laughs> Partner comes in in his or her pajamas and grabs your hand and looks at the ring and said, I am so grateful that we are married. I'm so grateful for you. And then you smile, you feel those feelings of appreciation, of gratitude, and then that's it. That's all you have to see. A cue that says that you're married, the feeling and the visualization in the first person. So even think about what nail polish you have on, if you wear nail polish, or even the jewelry that you may have on your hands, what the ring will look like. Even if you don't know what your engagement ring would look like, just think of your dream engagement ring and visualize it on your hand. What color stone is it? Does it have diamonds around it? Is it simple? Is it just a gold band? So you see them, they say how grateful they are to be married to you, or it could even be this, you're driving in a car together, you reach over for their hand and you see they have a wedding ring on and you have a wedding ring on and you're just seeing that and feeling grateful for that. Or you could even construct a scene where you're having a conversation with somebody and they ask you, so how's married life? How are things with so and so? And you say they're great, I am I am so in love, I'm so grateful for everything and I love being married to this person. Or you could even have a scene where you are walking into a party and I these are just different ideas that you guys can have you really just create what you want but you walk you have a scene where you walk into a party you're holding your significant other or your husband wife partner's hand and they introduce you as hey, this is my wife or this is my husband so and so or it could even be you going in grabbing your significant other and leading them to a friend or a family member and you say this is my beautiful wife, this is my beautiful husband, <laughs> beautiful husband, this is my handsome husband, 
so and so and that's it that's the scene you just introduce them as your husband or as your wife people say congratulations on the wedding and that's it basically so you just script this out ask specifically have as much fun with this as possible make it really detailed but not too long like I said you just want to have to see the scene in your head for about 10 seconds and that's it and I would recommend that you guys keep a journal or some kind of paper or whatever to keep log or keep track of these manifestations so you only need a script once guys this is literally just to get this scene clear in your head so that if you forget it or you need to go back or you just have it there it's important that we just have it there already written so that we don't lose sight of what it is that we want you don't have to script multiple times I know that's a question I get a lot you just have to really just script once what is important is the visualization which we will get into now visualize before bed now that we have constructed the scene we're really clear on it decided that this is what we want in a sleepy state we will bring up this scene so Neville Goddard teaches that we need to have this in a sleepy state because that is when we are most connected to our subconscious that is when we are connected to the awareness consciousness or God whatever that you wish to call it and this is right before you fall asleep so in that moment where you're closing your eyes you're really tired you know you're about to fall asleep that is when you bring up the scene in your head. Now, if you are having trouble falling asleep or getting into the state, I would recommend that you meditate a bit or just deep breathing with your eyes closed, just being really present in the moment. And doesn't matter if you're really tired, you have to bring up the scene right at that moment in that sleepy state. Once you're in the state, you start the scene in your head. What's really important when visualizing is that we feel these feelings of having this. Basically, we plant the seed of manifestation through our feelings. This is the analogy I'm gonna use. So we have our soil, we have our seed, which is our manifestation, which is what it is that we want. So our soil is basically our subconscious. So in order to plant that seed in our subconscious, the sun is our imagination and the water is our feelings. So we have the sun and we have our water. Through our imagination, through these specific events that we created, we're giving it sunlight and now all we have to do is water it in this moment. Your feelings are the water to growing this seed. You have to make sure that you put enough feeling, not overboard, and I'm gonna go into this later on. Bring up the scene in our head and we start to bring up these feelings of excitement, of love, of gratitude, maybe even relief if you're a person who feels a lot of anxiety around relationships or this person. You can even get teary-eyed if this is something that is beautiful to you, if this is something wonderful. We have to feel those feelings. If you're a person who naturally gets teary-eyed when you get happy, Whatever feels most natural to you in that setting, bring up those feelings. Don't try to force yourself to have feelings. You have to make sure it feels natural and real to you. The reason why we want a short scene, like I said, we don't want to get lost in imagining. We don't want our mind to veer off track, but also because as Neville Goddard said, we have to repeat this scene over and over and over again until we fall asleep. So this could be at a two or three times or who, however many times until you fall asleep. But what's important is that you are utilizing the sleepy state to its fullest advantage and you don't veer off track. If your focus goes away, bring it back to the scene. We go from start, we walk into the party holding hands. This is my husband, this is my wife, so and so. And then the person says, oh, pleasure to meet you. Congratulations, and you both say thank you end scene and then repeat again. So walking back into the party, you know, and you can even use different cues. You see the, the clothing you have on, the dress you have on as you walk in, the feeling, you know, maybe your heart's pounding a little bit and you introduce this person, end scene, repeat again. So you keep doing this, keep doing this until you just fall asleep. So that the last thought on your mind before you go to sleep is your scene in your mind. The key with visualization, like I said, it's basically you putting the water and the sun to the seed that we're planting into our subconscious. I know I'm gonna get asked, how many times do I have to visualize? One visualization at night, one night that you visualize and you do this is enough to already set off a series of events that will unfold naturally to bring you to your manifestation. So this imagination that you have, this scene that you're creating in your mind already exists somewhere else. 
What will happen is the universe will bring this manifestation to you at the physical level in a series of natural occurring events or the path of least resistance, whatever makes the most sense to both you and that specific person. Once you visualize once, I want to make it clear that it's not like this person is going to come knocking on your door tomorrow and they're going to offer you a ring. I mean, it could happen. You never know with the universe, but Normally what will happen since we have a lot of other things going on in our life that person has other maybe they're in a relationship already You know, maybe there's a third party natural events must unfold in order for it to come here in our current reality So once you do that once you visualize once before bed trust that's already planted as long as you watered it correctly trust that it's already sprouting it's already growing just like a flower takes time to bloom that is what it takes for your manifestation to come here so be patient if you feel that you did it right you actually felt the feelings the imagination was very clear the scene was very clear trust it is planted so you only ideally need to do this once let's get on to the third step which is the time in between visualization or implantation and the manifestation actually coming into the physical realm so it's it's important in this time period that you become patient and you act naturally and you don't try to manipulate the situation with this person you don't try to do the universe's work for you the universe will make everything perfect in its right time you ideally don't even have to do anything at this point you just have to live your life as you have been living it and let go of the visualization. Neville Goddard talks about letting go, releasing this, and kind of almost suspending judgment about your present life. Now, you don't have to act as if you're already married to this person. I would recommend you don't because then you're going to ruin the universe's already natural flow of events. But it's important you just go with the flow, you live your life, and you don't focus too much on this manifestation that you have thought up. You don't focus too much about having this person. You don't become obsessive. And it's okay if you think about it during the day. Usually the subconscious, like I said, it's wide open at night. So as long as you're not thinking about it right before in a negative sense, right before you go to sleep, then you should be okay because our conscious thoughts are not exactly as powerful as our subconscious thought. The subconscious is where all this takes place. The connection with awareness to source to the universe. So your conscious thoughts, it's going to be natural and normal for you to have a bit of anxiety, but what's important is that you don't play into this anxiety, that you don't let your mind wander off and your imagination wander off into this anxiety. So that's why it's important that you keep your life full of other things and just release it the best that you can. Even better if you forget about it, but just releasing it and trusting, say, okay, I trust in you universe, you're gonna bring it to me at the right time when is best for me. So how do you know if the implantation was successful, if the visualization was successful? Any little sign that you get, I don't care how big of a sign or how small of a sign it is, any sign that this person reaches out to you, tonight you visualize and then tomorrow they send a text saying, hey, take that, as a sign that it is already in action, that's already in motion. Even if they don't come to you saying, hey, I'm sorry for what happened in the past, or I love you, or let's make this work. Even if they don't say that, you have to suspend judgment and be grateful and take that as a sign that it's already coming to you. And once you receive that first sign, you don't have to do any more work. It could even come as some form, a, another form of contact, which is not necessarily a phone call or a text or whatever. It could just be them liking a picture on Instagram, replying to your story, it could be that you run into them and they say hello to you or it could even be through angel numbers so I've made a video on 1111 and 111 repeating once and when you see 1111 frequently that means that you are getting what it is that you're manifesting your manifestation is coming to you so once you see 1111 or just any sign or somebody comes up to you and talks to you and say hey so and so asked about you or they start talking to you about that person trust that the universe is telling you hey it's implanted it's coming even if you're not already where you want it to be even if they're you know maybe they're still in a relationship whatever happens <laughs> Just trust, it's coming to you. You don't have to do anything. I can't stress that enough. So just act naturally, live your life naturally. Maybe even focus on other things you wanna manifest. You can do this visualization method with other things to keep your mind busy, focusing on your goals, on your dreams, making sure that your whole life isn't revolving around this manifestation because then anxiety and other things will come up. Don't try to reach out to them. Don't try to call them to see if the manifestation worked. Let them come to you. If they come to you, that means it was successful. Even if you had no contact or whatever it may be, they come into your life somehow, you will know it's successful. Even if there's a third party right now, 
don't focus on the present circumstances. Everything is temporary. This current scenario right now is temporary. Don't give the current circumstances power. The universe will naturally clear the way through the path of least resistance in whatever way makes sense to you and to that person. So what I would like for you to do is wait at least two weeks to see a sign. And if a sign doesn't come to you in that two week threshold, then you can do the visualization again. Because what happens is a lot of times if we have limiting beliefs or we're not watering the seed enough or we're just not in the right state of mind when we do this visualization, it might not work. It might not be successfully sprouting. So give it two weeks. If you don't see any signs, you can do the night visualization again. So you can really do this visualization as much as you want, but you don't want to overdo it. You don't want to overwater the seed. Just give it what it needs. As signs and opportunities arise, just act naturally. If they reach out to you, be friendly, act like you normally would. Don't do anything out of the ordinary. Don't act as if you're already married to this person because that will throw things off. So just act as you would. Be their friend. If they invite you out for coffee, just act as you normally would. Go with the flow of events and trust and relax. That's very important. And in the time in between, like I was telling you before, focus on yourself, on your dreams, working on yourself. Because not necessarily for this other person, but just for you. Because as you work on yourself, as you feel better about yourself, you decrease the blocks and the limiting beliefs or whatever resistance you may have in your life. As you feel better about yourself, you feel more deserving of this love, especially if you have limiting beliefs around it. This is the thing, guys. Everyone is you pushed out. Our imagination through this visualization will create this person to start thinking more about you, maybe seeing you in a better light or in a different light. And as you work on yourself, you are also working to become more of a person that will become more attractive to that person. That person will also also become more of what is right for you. You too will naturally come together. Without manipulation, without any of these things, the universe will bring you two together. Doesn't matter how far away this person is, doesn't matter what their current situation is or what your current situation is, you two will be brought together. It's very important also, if you're not on speaking terms right now, don't reach out to them and don't chase. Let them come to you. I believe the third step is the most important because I know we tend to get impatient with the universe. We tend to want things now and it's okay if you want things now, but what's important is that you just release control, that you trust 100%. In the Bible, it talks about letting go and trusting, trusting in God, trusting in the universe. All you have to do is ask and you will receive. So don't try to overcomplicate things. If you're dealing with anxiety, like I said, focus on getting yourself busy, working out, out, focusing on other things that you wish to manifest. Don't let this consume you because then you're just going to block it and create, be, you're basically gonna get into your own way. So just trust, they're already yours. Happy manifesting, you guys. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please be sure to give me a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I'll try to answer as many as I can. And be sure to follow me on social media. I'm on Instagram and Twitter. And also check out my podcast, Taking Back Your Power. The link is always in the description of these videos. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to get more videos from me. I hope to hear all of your manifestation success stories. I always get these wonderful stories of how you guys have manifested people and manifested dream relationships and manifested the life of your dreams. It's totally possible and I want you to always remember that we live in an infinite universe. We live in a universe full of infinite possibilities, a universe that knows no bounds, no limits. You are an infinite being. You are a part of this beautiful creation of the universe and it's all interconnected. Your whole outer world is a result of you and your thoughts. So stay positive, stay in high vibration, enjoy your life. Don't get stuck on what you don't have in the present moment. I promise you, trust, you will get there. Thank you guys so much for watching and always remember this, no matter who you may be in this life, no matter what you may be going through, or no matter what your past is or what your current circumstances are, what you look like, your true beauty, your true worth, and your true power always come from within. I love you all, and I will see you in my next video. My light just popped. Bye-bye.